good day, afternoon. Hope everyone's well. Hope everyone's having an awesome day. As always, uh, the best day they possibly can, given everything that's going on and all that jazz. Uh, firstly, thanks again for stopping by. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, we're going to run through another one of our little beekeeping basics videos today, uh, continuing on from last time when we looked at short brood and sack brood. Uh, we're going to be today having a quick chat about two of the viruses which can affect your your older bees, your adult bees. Um, and by that I'm going to talk about the deformed wing virus. And if I can pronounce it correctly for once, it's going to be CBPB, which is the chronic bee paralysis virus. Got it right this time. Um, so we're going to have a quick look at those ones. So if you do like what you read, oh sorry, what you hear, if you do like what you see, please give us a quick thumbs up. Uh, and like I said, if you are here for the first time, please don't forget to give us a quick subscribe again if you do like what you see. And uh, a massive thank you to everybody that's uh, that's already subscribed to us, that's uh, joining us along this venture of ours, and uh, we'll go from there. So, as I mentioned, first up, we're going to have a look at uh, we're going to have a look at CBPB first of all. So, the chronic bee paral paralysis virus. And um, uh, now I don't have any videos because there's a couple of video, a couple of shots of um, the bees in one of their symptoms, which is really good to get a video on. Um, I don't have that video, but um, I've got a few pictures, a couple of pictures, which I'll chuck up. So I'll pop them up in just a second and um, then we'll have a quick chat about it. So a uh, couple of pictures regarding CBPV. So CBPV, the chronic bee paralysis virus. Now, I had CBPV in one of my hives uh, either this, either the last season or the season before, I can't quite remember. Um, and it's it's a horrible virus, it really is. Um, so basically, there's been quite a lot of research which has been put into CBPV, and there's nothing really out there which says exactly what causes it. Um, and so, given the fact that we have no idea of what causes the problem, there's limited to what we can do about treating the problem. Um, so CBPV is essentially speaking, it, it, it can it can wipe out your colony. Um, CBPV is a horrible disease. So if you've got a smaller colony, it can wipe it out. Uh, if you've got a larger, stronger colony, um, although it will affect it massively, it is something they can work through. So what does CBPV do to your bees? Now there's a couple of symptoms which you'll notice um, with the virus. Um, the first one is the one that I haven't got a video for. So like I said, this is really good for, if, you've, if I pop a link on one of the other channels, which has got a really good video for it uh, in the description. But um, the one of the symptoms you'll notice with your bees is, is they shake, um, almost like uncontrollable um, shaking. And their wings, their body, everything trembles. Um, you don't get that confused with the old waggle dance, which they do, uh, which is what they do to show directions of certain of, of food sources and water and such like that. It's not to get mixed up with the waggle dance. This is more of a, a, a almost like a vibrate. You will see the bees doing, and um, so you'll see all the, the bees vibrating around. Um, that's one symptom of it, which you'll see. Um, the second symptom that you'll see of CBPV is that the bees. If you look at a bee, you can see they've got like a like a hairy sort of body. Um, what will basically happen is all the hairs fall out, they become very dark and they become quite shiny. Um, CBPV will eventually kill the bees. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a horrible thing to witness. See, I, yeah, yeah, it's horrible. So first sign of CBPV is normally, uh, if you look outside of the front of your hive, you'll see a little pile of bees uh, or a big pile of bees, depending on how many bees you've got, which have been affected by it, um, which are either walking about on the floor because the virus causes the bees to lose the ability to fly. So you'll see them walking on the floor where they actually can't fly back up. Um, or you'll see a little pile of, of essentially dead bees which have been dragged out from the, from the hive, chucked out on the floor, or of course have died whilst crawling around on the floor themselves. Um, so I said it does, it, it will kill the bee eventually. And, um, and that's one of the first signs that you'll see. If you walk up to your hive, you'll see a pile of dead bees. And the first concern that I'll have is there's, there's the infection of CBPV going in. Um, 
it is also you'll see the same sort of problem is you'll you'll notice if a hive has been poisoned. Um, so if there's a farmer field nearby and they've been spraying, some of those um, some of those the sprays can be very harmful for your bees for your hive, and that can cause the same problem. So they can they can see a little pile of bees outside the front of your hive by killed off by poisoning by the farmer's spray. Um, so if you do see that pile, first of all, get yourself into your hive and you can have a look around and you can see if the bees have any of those other symptoms which I've mentioned. Uh, and if you have, then unfortunately, it may be a case you have, con the, well, the bees have contracted that virus. Now, CBPV does spread very, very quickly and it can take hold of your hive very, very quickly as well. Um, what you'll see the fact that it, it transmits from B to B to B and so and it contracts when they're passing each other so if you've got an, one infected bee if you imagine your hive which is full of bees um just say let's say for example one frame one frame is covered in maybe one 200 bees and this one bee that's contracted this virus is working its way through the hive and each bee it passes there is a strong chance that that's now going to pass on the the virus to the next bee um and so you can see how quickly that will pass. So that B then has it, it passes it over to the next one to pass it to the next one. It's uh, you can imagine how quickly that will spread, and um, you know it, it is like I said a horrible thing to witness. So uh, and like I said regarding treatment and such like that, it, there there isn't any one that I know of which uh, it can essentially treat CBPV. Um, it's it's just something that you have to try and move on. Um, the best advice that can be given if, um, if you do notice your hive having it is to get your hive moved away if possible. I, I didn't have the ability to do that. Um, so my hive is next to you see on my other videos, you'll see my hives are next to each other. And there is every chance that one of the bees which has got the infection can fly into the wrong hive and therefore spread it through to that hive as well, causing more problems. But if you're in a position where you can move the, your hive to an isolated location um, and deal with it away from the rest of your apiary site then that's going to be a really good really good shout um, so you can try and restrict the the, the spread of that virus in, in your apiary site um, so it's just something to be aware of and keep an eye on like I said I, I, I've had this, the, the CBPV virus has been in one of my hives on one occasion thankfully my bees were able to sort it out themselves um, but watching the uh, the bees that have the infection quivering and you know the, the shiny black bees which have lost all their hair it, it's just it's heartbreaking to watch so I um I hope you don't uh, end up getting it in your hive but there is a strong possibility that you will and just be aware that it's there um, so that's um, that's a chronic bee par paralysis virus um, the next thing we're going to chat about is going to be the deformed wing virus or DWV uh, which you'll see um, so I'm going to stop here I'm going to pop a couple of a couple of pictures up have a look, see what it looks like, and then, like I said, we'll have a little chat about it uh, in a minute. So, here we go. So, as the couple of pictures there suggest, we're going to have a quick look at the deformed wing virus. Now, I could have put this in the uh, the first video when I was discussing the uh, common brood diseases. Um, however, the, um, the the main effects of deformed wing virus is you are going to see in your adult bees. So, I decided to put it here. Um, now, there has been a lot of research which has been put into deformed wing virus because of the problems it can cause to your hive. Um, so I'm going to run through it quickly and uh, then I said I'll pop some links at the bottom in our description so you can go and have a look uh, and, uh, and do a bit more research uh, when you've got some more time. So my understanding at this point, and I will say it's my understanding because there is still a lot of um, uh, research going into it, is the main cause of deformed wing virus is the varroa mite. So the varroa mite will um, latch on to one of your one of your larvae, one of the, the the bees which are developing in your hive, and will pass on this disease, this infection, which causes the uh, the, the virus, as I've mentioned. The uh, what will happen is if it doesn't kill the bee as it's developing, and the adult does emerge, you will notice a few different things. Either that it's shorter, that it's stubby. Um, but the main thing that you'll notice is that the wings are, as the name suggests, deformed. Um, they are, they look almost torn, they look ripped, they look just, just small, and they, uh, at the end of the day, they're, they're not going to be able to function as they should be able to function. Uh, the lifespan of a bee which has got 
um, deformed wing, vir wing virus um, is from the last research which I looked up is around 48 hours um, so they're not going to live long if they make it to adult. So the best thing you can do uh, to keep on top of deformed wing virus, to try and keep it out of your hive in the first place, is keep an eye on your mite levels. So these are the Varroa mite checks, which you should be doing as a beekeeper. Now, I'll, I'll, I may do a video a little bit later on about um, the Varroa count and such like that, and how to check for Varroa, how to treat for Varroa and such like that. Um, but I'll, I'll do that as a later video. At the moment, like I, said, I just want to talk mainly about the diseases and the infections your bees are going to be catching. <clears throat> and deformed wing virus, like I said, is going to be one of those, or possibly one of those, if you don't keep um, a, a good level of your mite count. Once the bees have it, unfortunately, there is nothing that I know of that you're going to be able to use to treat deformed wing virus. And it's just going to be one of those things where you're going to have to try and hope that the bees can sort out themselves. But there is very close connection to the deformed wing virus uh, infection and the, holony, the honeybee collapse um, sort of issues where the, the, the colony will just completely die and there is the, you haven't got a chance of getting it back up and running. Um, <clears throat> the main reason going to be that one is, is the varroa mites will, uh, will, will obviously get into the bees, get into the honeybees and they will cause these infections and as the winter goes on so if you're looking at going into winter with your bees and let's say hypothetically speaking your bees have got deformed wing virus uh, the bees are going to die quicker your, the, the mites are going to take over and eventually your hive is just going to collapse um, and, and that's obviously not what you want so that's that's a very quick introduction to the deformed wing virus um, and like I said it's linked very closely to the varroa mite and I'll do another video maybe at a later date to, to, to show off some of the what you can do to, to treat the varroa, uh, what the varroa is. I'll pop that in one of my the later videos that we're doing regarding the pests and the diseases and such like. And um, we'll have a look at the varroa mite as one of those ones. Um, and like I said, we'll maybe have a look at, a, at how to treat and how to deal with varroa mites on a later episode, maybe later on in the year. But we'll 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 follow that up maybe hopefully later. So for me, that's gonna be it today. Um Thank you again so much for everyone joining me. Thank you so much for everyone that has subscribed to my channel so far. If this is the first time you're stopping by, uh, please don't please give consider giving us a, a thumbs up and a subscribe. Um, there's going to be plenty more coming along this season. This is see this little series that I'm doing today is mainly to try and help people or keep people learning through lockdown, which is what I've mentioned previously. And um, so there is something there to keep people ticking on by. Uh, with the honeybees and uh, just keep them learning as things go. Uh, I know I've been a bit fidgety today so I apologise for that. Uh, unfortunately yesterday I was in a car crash uh, where a car went up to the, the rear end of my car and uh, my back's struggling a little bit but the show must go on. I wanted to get a video up today so we can keep this series pushing on as best we can. So I hope you enjoy it. I really, really do. Please like, please subscribe, please share, please comment, do obviously what you need to do um, and like I said further videos will be coming. So Thanks again. You take care of yourself. Have a great day.